Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan, and today's video is going to be a little bit more advanced than my JavaScript video. Today, I assume you know a little bit about reversing, such as assembly, and a basic knowledge of C functions and vulnerabilities. Also, some Python. So in today's video, we have a binary I wrote called security, and the password is in strings, but we are not going to get the password this way, even though you can, because today's video is about trying new things and learning. We are going to be reversing this binary and finding a vulnerability that allows us to brute force a 30 digit long password in 10 to 15 seconds. First, we will start off by gathering some information about the binary. So let's run file on it. We can see that it is a 32 bit macro. So that means I can use my binary ninja demo to reverse it. Let's open binary ninja and start looking at the code. Okay, so here we are. We can see some compares and jumps that look interesting at the top. You can see the password, but like I said, we are not going to be using that. So let's look down here. We can see what looks like a for loop, and here it is adding one to the counter. But here's a compare that if passed adds one to EAX and then moves that to EBP minus hex 134, which will come into play later. If it is not passed, it will not add to this location on the stack. So that is interesting. Once this loop counters at hex 1F or 31, then it will pass. This means the code will run 30 times. That is interesting. Remember the password is 30 digits long? You might start to be getting an idea of what is going on. Then it calls printf three times. It compares ebp minus hex 134 to hex 1f or 30 characters plus a null byte. So you can probably tell by now that this for loop goes through every character in the password and your input and checks them against each other. For every character that matches, it adds one to this variable, which you may know as ebp minus hex 134. Then it compares it to the length of the password being 30 plus a null byte. And if it is, that means every character matched. If not, then the password is wrong. Now you can see one of those printfs says checking. But what is interesting there? Well, if we go there in hex, we can see that there is no percent %s afterwards even though that is probably where it will print what you typed in. Let's try it to make sure I'm right about that. We will run it, enter some garbage, and yup. This of course means a format string vulnerability. To make sure, let's try some format strings. Okay, percent %s didn't seem to work. Let's try percent %x. Aha! There we go. That is a hex value leaked from the stack. So let's recap. We have a vulnerability that allows us to leak from the stack, and we have a variable on the stack that holds how many letters were correct. You might know where I'm going with this. What if we wrote a Python script to try random letters and leak that variable until it increases, and then add that letter to a string and try the second letter with the same method, and so on. So that is exactly what I did. Here you can see the exploit script. It uses os, random, and clear, which is a library I made that just has one function that clears the screen. Here it says, while the program does not output access granted, pick a random letter, leak the data, see if the counter increase, and if not, keep trying until it does. Then just keep doing that for every character, and eventually it will output access granted and stop the loop. So let's try it. Wow, it works first try. It says access granted. Let's try it in the actual program now. Yup, it works. So today we reverse engineered a binary and found it not only has crappy coding, but also has a vulnerability. And those combined allowed us to write a really unique exploit. I already know some people are going to say, well, you could have just looked at the password and strings or this would never happen in a real life example, but that is not what this video was about. It was about learning something new. So if you enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos.